Welcome back, everybody. This is Kara Crossplate Brindle. Welcome back to another showcase of an amazing Medicaid provider. We're here in the Colorado Medicaid Mental Health Providers Facebook group, and today we have Misty with us. Misty, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to hearing more about you and your practice and why you take Medicaid. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I am Misty White. I'm a licensed professional counselor in the Denver metro area. Um, I have my own private practice. It's called Cascading Hope. And um, it's been up in, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I like the word cascading a lot. So it's like, what can we cascade? Let's cascade some hope. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I uh, it took me a while to get to that name, but as soon as I got it, I was like, it, it landed and it felt really good. Nice. Um, I started my private practice at the same time I was working at a residential treatment facility for traumatized children in the Denver area. And the reason why is because I just kept hearing from the organization, there are not very many Medicaid providers out there who are specially trained working with this population of kids at this high level mm -hmm. and working with families, the families that are incorporating these kids, either biological parents or foster to adopt or adoptive parents. So um, a lot of my clients, as they were transitioning out, would start to panic because some of the kids that were in the residential would have been there for six months to a year or two. And so the families had the support, the kids had the support of a Medicaid provider, but then it was like they walked out the door and they didn't have that support anymore. And I'm sure that there are wonderful clinicians out there who are trauma informed, but who out there were taking Medicaid. Yeah. And so um, one of my families, uh, they really, they, they hounded me to start a private practice. They're like, <laughs> you have to start one. And I was really reluctant. Um, I'm not a businesswoman. Um, I just didn't really feel savvy enough to go out and do it. And so then finally I was like, okay, fine, I'm going to do this just for the continuity of care um, for any family coming from any residential facility or uh, families that are going through the foster adopt process who need training and need support about how trauma um, really affects children's brains. Right. So I, yeah, so I started my own uh, company, I think it was in 2009 or 2010. Mm -hmm. And it was a tiny private practice. I think I did it one day a week and I had like four clients. That was it. Um, and so then working at the residential facility, I just was starting to feel burnt out. My ninth year there, um, I was a mom of two and I was getting ready to adopt a, a little kiddo and I just didn't have the flexibility of time in my schedule. Right. And so I knew that if I wanted to continue working with that population that I needed to get credentialed uh, with Medicaid on my own. And so I love it. I love being a Medicaid provider. Um, I absolutely adore the clientele that walks through the door because I feel like at times they're a little bit more appreciative if they find a qualified therapist who really knows what they're doing because they feel like they uh, have kind of won the jackpot of like, oh, I've got Medicaid and only you know, maybe a stereotype of what kind of providers take Medicaid. Right. Um, but, you know, I'm very well trained in trauma. And I just think it's great that, you know, people talk about the money. Um, it sets me on fire when I hear clinicians say, well, only good therapists take private pay. And I'm <laughs> like, are experience that way. It's like, no, 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 that's not how this works. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, I was like, if I wanted to be independently wealthy, I guess I would just be private pay. But sure. I, in my gut and in my soul, I just truly want to help people. And I feel like I have a very a, a good skill set that I can really go help people. And, and I feel like I do. I feel like I can provide some really good therapeutic support, a lot of psychoeducation and do it for clients that have Medicaid. Nice. So that's really exciting for me. Yeah. I was going to say, I know you take more than just Medicaid. So for the folks that are like, you're a phenomenal therapist, you have all that training. I know people would love to know what other insurances you take too. <laughs> yeah. So I take uh, CCHA Medicaid and then I take Colorado Access, uh, the, the Ray 3 and 5. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that I'm contracted with. And then I take Blue Cross Blue Shield. Nice. And then I am contracted with Beacon Health Options which now is also oddly coupled with some Anthem people, mm -hmm. some Anthem folks. And now they've coupled with Kaiser Permanente. 
So if people have Kaiser, it, they kind of conduit through Beacon. So gotcha. yeah, yeah. So those are the ones that I take currently. I do not foresee taking any more. The paneling <laughs> process can be a nightmare. Well, and I think to your point earlier, I was thinking about this too, of like Medicaid is such a in-demand thing that even the clinicians that take it are full, right? The phenomenal therapists that we oh. know in our network most likely are full unless they're expanding their practices or moving to a group practice. And so even when you said that of like coming from supporting families in this community mental health sphere saying, oh, yeah. I can see them once a month. It's like, well, that's not helpful to most of our families. So yeah, those who've chosen this route really can celebrate. I can see you once a week or once every two weeks. And it feels like it's more progressive that way. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And like I said, I mean, most of them, I, I, I took your training about the attendance policy, if they no call, no show. And that hasn't been a problem in my practice. Um, I've probably, in my years of working with Medicaid clients, I can honestly say, I think there's been three families that have just no called, no showed. Yeah, um, like and then, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, it's, and then I find out maybe they moved or I found out that things were really, really difficult and they didn't have transportation to come and they were embarrassed to call and say, I can't come. And then they missed one session and then there was a lot of shame and guilt and embarrassment around that. So then they didn't come to the second one. And so for me, it's just picking up the phone and calling them and saying, are you okay? Yeah. Is everything okay? And then getting the story. But for the most part, I don't feel taken advantage. I don't feel, you know, like, oh, you know, I have to write all of this stuff, you know, all of the, these missing appointments off because um, I feel like they're pretty dedicated to come in. Yeah, I, I, guess, I completely I agree. For. Yeah, I think private practice, that's where it feels so different than community mental health or that mandated kind of focus. And I really appreciate that we're having this conversation because we have some new people within the group that I think are right there on the cusp of deciding if they want to take on yeah. Medicaid or not. So I love that you're sharing your story of like, this is what it looks like and it's very rewarding and the people are committed to coming and doing the work, um, you know, whether it's your yeah. families or your, your kid, kiddos. So um, I want to touch on something that we shared offline for our viewers, which is you have this other amazing project that you were telling me about. I want them to hear about that as well, if that's okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for that. I'm very excited. So um, as, working with trauma, um, that's fun. It's a passion. I'm, I'm trained with, in the neurosequential model of therapeutics. Uh, I'm an EMDR consultant, and so those are kind of my babies. But in my heart and in my soul, I really want to work with uh, families that want to, or parents who want to, or people who want to become parents, um, people who are already parents, or anyone that supports a parent. Um, <laughs> so I have a podcast called The Parenting Naked Collaborative. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, naked. Yes, naked. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 exa <laughs> exactly. I want it to be a little bit provocative, but in the notion of, um, in my podcast, I host it with two other ladies and we want to talk about how raw and mm -hmm. open uh, conversations about how it is to be a parent and what that looks like. Um, you know, we talk about um, infertility and the struggle that some people have with that. How many couples are facing infertility right now and deciding, do we have children? Do we adopt? What do we do? And these, these hard conversations. Um, we talk about pregnancy and how women's bodies change and how couples change. We um, really go in depth about uh, delivery. What does delivery look like? We have a, a two segment uh, section where we have a daddy boot camp where we have dads come in and talk about their experiences. Uh, and so we've got our first season wrapped up. I think there's about 16 different uh, episodes. Um, we have some other Medicaid providers who've come in and talked about domestic violence and what that looks like, miscarriage. I mean, we're talking about it all. We want, we want people to be able to open up the podcast and go, oh, mom guilt. I would like to hear what they have to say about mom guilt. Right. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's my little baby. It's in the zygote phase. <laughs> um, but I, I would love for people to uh, listen. It's on every major uh, podcast platform. It's awesome. called Parenting Naked Collaborative. Uh, we have a Facebook page and an instant, uh, Instagram page as well. But it's, it's really for everybody. I'm like, if you're a grandparent, if you're an aunt, you're an uncle, uh, or you just want to hear some silly stories or I you've got that. a client that's suffering from postpartum, you can say, hey, you know, you might find this supportive. In, Absolutely. In this 
Well, and just podcasts are so important right now for that um, access to information. So I love that you're offering it to that broad scope of people. And hopefully yeah. as soon as this video goes live, you can post that in the comment section so people can check out the, the current recordings as well as your website, which I'll list here um, for Perfect. people to connect. So Misty, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate hearing your passion and I'm hoping that our newest people in the group will feel encouraged by your story to say Medicaid isn't so scary. Um, I think that's your and my journey. And yeah. I just really appreciate you being part of the Medicaid family. Thank you so much for being here yeah. on this video. Yes, and thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. I mean, gosh, you are just like a beacon of light to all of us <laughs> Medicaid providers. And so it is so nice to feel wrapped up in your warmth and your energy and going, this is great. This is a family. And how cool, because I never knew it existed Aww. outside of a residential setting. So thank you. I appreciate that. And I look forward to building our community. Hopefully people can catch this video and just feel like they have an opportunity to reach out to you and all of the skill sets that you have shared today. So for viewers, stay tuned for more videos of wonderful Medicaid providers. And Misty, thank you again. Take care, everyone. Yeah, thank you.